What I'd like to do now is wrap up the discussion about Java barrier synchronizers. We'd done that earlier and give you a discussion about their usage considerations. So you can use barrier synchronizers for different purposes. We've talked about a bunch of them. Here's a summary of them. You can use a countdown latch as a simple on-off latch to signal things can proceed, uh, either one at a time or multiple things. So for example, one use would be to use a, a latch with a count of, uh, with a single count. And you basically would have the main thread here wait for all the various, um, sorry, in this case, you have the worker threads waiting for the main thread to reach a point where it can let them start to run. You can also use a countdown latch in a somewhat more set of uh, sophisticated ways. You can have one thread wait for n threads to complete an action. One thread can wait until some action is completed n times. Key thing to remember about countdown latches, it really is based on events, not threads. So they don't have to be you know, threads and threads completing. It's just an action completes n times. So here's an example where we have the main thread waiting for all the worker threads to complete. So that's kind of a different use case than the one we just talked about. So this is sort of an exit barrier-like approach. And uh, only when all of those threads are done will this thread be able to proceed. Cyclic barriers are about threads. So if, if countdown latches are about events or actions, a cyclic barrier is about groups of threads waiting for each other to reach a certain point. So typically, it's used if you have algorithms that have cycles where you want to be able to do a bunch of processing in one phase, let everybody reach a stopping point, then start all over again on the next phase of something else. And um, the thing to remember is cyclic barriers re require a fixed size number of threads. And I, I can't tell you the number of times I've forgotten that when I'm doing examples. And, I'm always like, why is my code deadlocked? And it's because you have to have a fixed size number of threads. Whereas with countdown latches, you don't necessarily need a fixed size number of threads. There are situations where this could be overly restrictive, and so you may need to use other mechanisms uh, like phasers. Countdown latch is used very heavily throughout Android. If you take a look at the code I'm showing here, there's all kinds of examples where countdown latches are used both within the framework of Android itself as well as the various apps that come pre-bundled with Android. Oddly enough, cyclic barrier is not used anywhere in Android. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is that having lots of threads coordinating their action is just not a common thing to do in a lot of UI applications. It would be much more common if you're doing high-performance computing on a server somewhere where you have lots of cores. OK, so that's just the, the end of the discussion about barrier synchronizers. As you can see, there's it's pretty straightforward. <laughs>